In Acts, it talks about Jerusalem and Jesus after the day of the Passover, after the crucifixion, after the resurrection. We come to 50 days after Passover, festival called Shavuot, or in modern Christian thinking, Pentecost. Where were the disciples? Well, they were staying in the upper room where we were a while ago, and they were probably sleeping there, but probably not spending all of their time there. 50 days is a long time. 10 days is a long time to be in that room after the ascension of Jesus into the heavens. That's a long time, 10 days in one room. And it does say that they were listening to the apostles' teaching. Well, the place of teaching, the first uh, century setting, would have been probably right here in this area. Uh, it says they were together in the house. It doesn't say in the upper room, it says in the house. In Hebrew, when I say in the house, what I would say is babayit. Well, the temple was always called the bayat, the house, the house of the Almighty One, the house of God. And so when it says they were together in the house, what it really means is they were together in the area of the temple. So they probably were here somewhere on these steps. It does say that there was this an amazing thing where fire fell from the heavens and they began speaking in languages they didn't know. And not just that, they, they witnessed miracles of, of rushing mighty wind. Well, that kind of sounds like a, a blast of a horn, a trumpet. We just celebrated Feast of Trumpets recently, and so did they hear the sound of a mighty horn? Well, maybe they did. Maybe it was a, like a giant shofar. Uh, the fire, that's interesting, fire. Where did the fire come from? Interesting thing. There is a weekly Torah portion, a portion of the books of Moses that we read on a cycle throughout the year. And the cycle for the festival called Pentecost or Shavuot includes the story of God's presence on Mount Sinai and Moses went up to Mount Sinai and then there's a, a story where they're together at the foot of the mountain, they look up and there's a huge sound like a giant shofar, a rushing wind, and there's fire on the mountain. That's the passage they were reading the night before Pentecost. And so on that passage in Acts chapter 2, when it says there was a mighty, a mighty rushing wind and the fire fell and the people began to speak in other languages, interestingly enough, that would have been a passage everybody had read the night before. Peter stood up and he said, this is that. It's, it's a great way to interpret the Bible. This is that, this is what, what just happened I can explain it because it's in the Bible. You didn't know this was what it was referring to, but right now I'm telling you, this is what that was. They listened to him. They heard the story. It says 3,000. Wait a minute, 3,000. Remember over there when we were by the upper room and we saw that tiny little street, that narrow street. Can you imagine 3,000 people in that street? I can't, but I can easily imagine 20,000 people gathered here on these steps. I think that's exactly what we're talking about. Here on these steps, the fire fell, the wind blew, the presence of the Almighty God was here in this place. And yes, 3,000 became followers on that day. What a wonderful thing. And they not only became followers, but they wanted to be baptized. They wanted to actually make a visible representation of this declaration of faith. And right around us in this area, there are no less than 50 ritual baths in this area. And so they, they went, they were baptized, they became members of this new, wonderful movement, which was the followers of Jesus, Yeshua, in the first century. Mm -hmm.